When we talk about ideal gases, we're talking about a construct that doesn't actually exist. We're talking about particles that don't interact with each other. And the particles themselves don't have any volume. So you theoretically could compress an ideal gas down to zero volume. Or you could cool it down to zero volume. In fact, that's how we define the absolute zero in temperature, the zero case for the volume of an ideal gas. But those are limiting conditions, and we don't often go there. But let's look at how the pressure varies for decreasing volumes of an ideal gas. Here I'm going to plot an isotherm. That is, we're going to fix the temperature, same temperature, isotherm, and reduce the volume of an ideal gas. I'll start here at a certain pressure and a certain volume. And as I decrease the volume, the pressure will increase by the ideal gas law. As I continue to decrease the volume, the pressure will continue to increase. But you'll notice the pressure increases get more dramatic for the same volume decrease. That is, the compressibility decreases. It gets harder to compress the gas. As you continue to compress the gas, that isotherm shape for the ideal gas asymptotically approaches zero volume. That is, pressure increases become very large for very small decreases in the volume. It's very difficult to compress an ideal gas down near zero volume. What if the temperature is different? Well, I can look at different temperatures. Here's higher temperatures for an ideal gas. But ideal gas temperature variation, they still behave the same way. You'll still reach that point where Decreasing the volume corresponds to very high increases in the pressure. These are the features of an ideal gas.